Well, like they say, a long journey begins with the first step. And you should take the first step. And I think we should take this long journey. And let's start here. And I think we can change the system. And I believe that you all can do it. Because you come with ideas, with visions, to, want to have a change for a better future for all of you and the future generations. Well, you have, you have to be very positive in these things. Uh, I myself do not know whether my proposal will be accepted, not just by the party leaders who run these organizations, but by the public at large. But it is an attempt. Let us, uh, let us knock on the door and ask them to open these doors and let us all come in. And uh, let's not say they may not open the door and we may find ourselves uh, isolated or will be a minority in, in the group that they have or they may not allow us in. But let us keep knocking on the door and let us tell them that's what we want. We want you to open up. Let's all become members of your organisation. Let us participate in the development of this country. That is, that is the proposal that I'm putting forward. I think what, hap what happened then was because uh, the West, the West or the developed uh, uh, part of the world was experiencing serious recessions. And a lot of the funds were coming to, to this part of the world, to the East, to Asia, where there are a lot of uh, possibilities for funds being used uh, effectively and, 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 and properly with, with uh, good returns. And uh, because of that, it attracted this capital to our part of the world. And also, at that time, uh, I think people had more confidence in the policies that were enunciated by the leadership of the day. As such, uh, there were investable funds that were being offered to be invested in all these countries around here. And that was the reason why there was an influx of FDIs coming to all these countries in Asia. And I think uh, at the moment, uh, not only FDIs are not coming in because of lack of confidence in the economy, uh, but also because uh, even local investors are taking their money out of the country. Surprisingly, even those who have uh, been very successful in the country have cashed out to put money elsewhere, outside of the country, because of lack of confidence in the way things are being done in Malaysia itself. Historical perspective. That is an old story. <laughs> 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 you want to go back to history? <laughs> well, actually, I decided to disband uh, Spang Up 46 with the agreement of all those people who supported that movement at the time because there was uh, this possibility of uh, getting the old AMNO reunited again after AMNO Baru was formed in 1988. There was no point to go on harping on issues which don't exist anymore. So there was a, a chance for reconciliation and I extended my hands of friendship. Uh, that's about all. And I thought uh, we could then uh, 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 band ourselves uh, together so that we can uh, work through a cooperative uh, manner to help build the country. ISA is an old law that we inherited from the British. They wanted to secure this country against the threat, against both internal as well as external threat. At that point of time, there was this militant communism wanting to take over the country. And they were using all methods in order to uh, seize power in, in Malaya and later on Malaysia. When we gained independence, we inherited this law. And this law was used to, to combat this uh, insurgency and to some good effect. And in fact, uh, we were able to contain some of the subversive uh, movements that were being uh, 
infiltrated into our society, particularly the unions and organized uh, uh, associations that were used as a front to, uh, to undermine our government at that time. But now, of course, uh, we don't have this problem anymore. I think we have uh, seen the cessation of, uh, of, of uh, militancy in the country and we don't f feel the threat anymore. After all, everybody is extending hands of friendship to our people and our government. And I see no reason why we must continue to have this on our statute book. So ISA is a defunct law. It's no longer necessary. After all, we have so many other laws that could be used to contain threat. If indeed we feel that we need some features of that law in order to combat, let's say, um, terrorist, uh, terrorist uh, threats on our shores, then by all means, we should enact a new law in a fashion that should take care of new developments. Uh, but I don't think ISA is relevant anymore for the purpose of combating such a, such a threat. OSA was devised in order to contain leakages of government secrets that was used during the Second World War in order to contain leakages of secrets during uh, our, our, the defense of our country against, against the foreign enemies. But that was the British. We were not independents then, during the Second World War. Uh, and we inherited the same law. And we amended the law in order to suit our, our political uh, agenda. And that is to prevent members of the public from knowing what's going on in the government, pertaining to tender, pertaining to appointments, pertaining to things which are not considered secrets but could be labelled secret or confidential purely because we wanted to hide some facts from the public view. And I think it is not uh, important for us to do that. But I think we should be more open now if we want to be more transparent, if we want to uh, adhere to good governance. I think we should share information with the public so that we may get proper feedbacks and, and that we can govern this country more effectively. Uh, so I think OSA is in fact, uh, is in fact encouraging corruption, encouraging all these side deals that are being done when in fact uh, it should be done more openly, uh, when especially using public funds to, 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 to procure goods, for, goods and services for, for the government and for the people. So I think OSA also is out of date and it's not helping in our fight against corruption.